everybody. A lot to talk about with this next storm system coming in on Tuesday. Not a lot of time to do it. So we're going to get right into it here tonight. As you can see on the radar map, uh, we've got all kinds of colors going. We got blue, we got purple, we got pink going on. And we've got this first system that moved through on Monday, now completing its trek uh, eastward, moving through Duluth. We had some pretty good snows move across the northern parts of North Dakota and Minnesota here uh, on Monday. But uh, we've got a couple of areas that we need to watch out for. In particular, right now, uh, these two pink areas right now are our winter storm warnings. So uh, the first one further to the north here, uh, they're saying three to five inches with up to 60 mile per hour wind gusts that to me seems i think a little high up here i think the stronger winds will be a little bit further to the south now i could maybe go with 40 miles per hour but nevertheless what you will see for certain up in the uh, northern uh, winter storm morning area will be uh, the high amounts of snowfall so uh three four five six inches perhaps even more in some areas but uh, these are the areas that for for sure uh, we'll see the higher rates of snow and probably some stronger winds as we get into the evening hours now this one a little bit further to the south they're saying four to seven inches with gusts of 40 miles per hour i can get on board pretty much with that for the most part with this pink area and you know i wouldn't be surprised if at some point this connects up and we get a winter storm warning in between here as well just might as well connect the two at this point uh, otherwise we've got uh, winter weather advisories here all in the purple ultimately i think most of what this winter weather advisory pertains to is going to be the potential for some freezing rain and in fact those of you down in sioux falls area they issued a winter storm watch and i think a good chunk of that is probably the combination of the potential freezing rain and then the strong winds that you could have also going into Tuesday, Tuesday night. So we're talking about some very dangerous conditions when we're connecting the two. We've got some strong winds, freezing rain. Of course, now you're talking very slippery roads, but also the potential for power outages. Not a whole lot has changed, uh, particularly when it comes to the track of this storm system. We're going to add on a little bit of freezing rain to some areas that maybe I didn't have it on before. And also kind of trim off some of the snow on the south end. Uh, and it looks like also potentially it's speeding up just a bit. This is 6 a.m. now. So uh, yesterday's runs had this a little bit further back to the north and west. So 6 a.m., this is already pushing it into the Devil's Rake Lake region. Uh, you've got that transition between the rain and snow. So we're looking at that, uh, that uh, uncertainty area, that area of freezing rain and sleet taking place. So as I said before, uh, should this low pressure system kind of slip north or south as it heads down to the southeast uh, it's going to be playing a big role as to how much snow you're going to get how much rain you're going to get and how much freezing rain you're going to get so ultimately this line here as i said the other night anywhere around that uh, 60 miles north and south of this line uh, keep that in mind that could shift either way so if you're close to this line here uh, you might get a little more rain you might get a bunch more snow you could get some freezing rain so uh, keep that in mind as we go along here this is 9 a.m tuesday some really heavy snows now across devil's lake region uh, we got that freezing rain going on across the eastern portions of the dakotas uh, on up into the north central parts of north dakota and by noon that heavier snow is now making its way into western parts of minnesota and for those of you that saw that snow move across the north here on monday and how heavy some of that got for a while it's kind of what we're going to be seeing for Tuesday, but just for a longer periods of time and maybe even a little bit heavier. So, uh, boy, if you thought Monday was impressive, Tuesday is going to be even more uh, impressive and uh, potentially last just a little bit longer than what it did uh, for Tuesday. Uh, so here we are uh, around noon time frame Tuesday. Uh, again, that freezing rain of a little bit of rain to the south. We have this first cold frontal boundary here, and ultimately around that is where we're going to be looking looking at those strong winds really beginning to develop on into Tuesday afternoon. We got a secondary cold front sitting up a little bit further to the north as well. And by 3 p.m. you can see this particular model pushes the snow into the Twin Cities area. Now, last night's run or yesterday's run had this snow area a little bit further to the north. 
Now it has it just dipping a little bit further south. Unfortunately, right before rush hour, what would you rather have? Some heavier snow or the potential of freezing rain? It's kind of a toss up. But unfortunately, as we get to that 6 p.m. time frame, that warm air works just a little bit further to the north, and it's got the potential uh, for some of you across the Twin Cities for seeing some freezing rain getting around that 6 p.m. time frame. So either you're going to be dealing with some heavy snow, or you might actually even get a little bit of freezing rain as we get into those evening hours. Again, that's the uh, heavier snow lingers back to the north and west on the north side of the slow pressure system. And for the remainder of you, kind of south and west of that area, we're looking at some very strong winds continuing going on into the evening. So that evening commute, especially for the Twin Cities, is just not going to look good at all at this point as things are showing right now. 9 p.m., that secondary cold front makes its way just a little bit further to the south and, of course, dragging some more colder air with it. Uh, so that backside of that low pressure system continuing to drag that snow south. Meanwhile, this low pressure system continues to kind of drift to the south and east. So those of you down in the southeastern parts of Minnesota, including the Twin Cities area, perhaps still around that 9 p.m. time frame, you're going to be on that borderline between rain, freezing rain, and snow. Midnight, that uh, cold front continues continues on, pulls in some more colder air, just a little bit of rain and freezing rain left perhaps around midnight in that southeastern parts of the Minnesota still. And then 3 a.m. on Wednesday morning, uh, you know, look at this. This does happen on occasion uh, with these stronger clipper systems kind of running down the Red River Valley as some northerly cold air uh, sometimes does bring in those longer flurries, those longer stretches of snow uh, across eastern parts of North and South Dakota, Northwest Minnesota. Then here's the remnants of that system as it continues to pull on out of the area. 6 a.m., not a whole lot left, uh, just this little bit up here around the Red River Valley region. All right, snowfall forecast. I actually didn't change it too much from last night. The only thing I did is kind of shave off the snow uh, down through this region just because it's looking more likely that you're going to be dealing with uh, the potential for some freezing rain. And I'll show you that graphic here in a little bit. Uh, the other thing I did was drag some snow just a little bit further to the south. I shaved back some of this uh, two to five range just a little bit. Of course, you got this tight, tight gradient. And as I said before, as this low pressure system moves down to the southeast, if it waffles either north or south just a little bit, is going to play a big role as to how much some of you, especially in this region, get when it comes to snowfall, rain, and freezing rain. So again, we'll, we'll continue to monitor this as we go through Tuesday. Keep that in mind. Those of you a little bit further to the north, on the north end or on the north side of this main band of snow, we're looking at two to five up here, uh, including Duluth area and then trace to two in the lighter blue region. Now there are some models, there are some models that drag some of the snow way further north. So maybe there's a potential for some of you a little bit further to the north to get a little bit more than we've got in here, two to five. But I'm kind of sticking with my guns here at this moment and thinking it's going to be a narrower band uh, with the two to five than, of course, the uh, four to seven. So we're, we're sticking with my guns here, uh, but I'll just kind of throw that little bit out there. We'll see if the other models know a little more something than what I'm letting on to here or that I'm used to. But to me right now, it just doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. I think we're going to see these narrow bands. It's kind of typically uh, what happens with these clipper systems. Of course, as I just mentioned, the area of uncertainty here on the south end of this main band of snow, uh, including the Twin Cities. So right now, I still got Twin Cities, I'll say three to five inches of snow. Uh, boy, if if it dips down just a little bit, you know, obviously we're going to be talking more about the four to seven range. But unfortunately, if it uh, continues the way I think it does, you're going to get uh, a kind of a, a, a time or a period of some heavier snows as you get into the afternoon and then a little bit of a warm up. And unfortunately, and then you could be uh, dealing with some freezing rain. So, uh, but again, kind of an area of uncertainty, Twin Cities, Fargo, Alexandria, kind of all up and down I-94 between the Twin Cities and Fargo region. And then here's where I'm thinking as far as the track for that uh, freezing rain. We won't even call it drizzle, I don't think, at this point. We're just going to call it freezing rain, where some of you actually could get a quarter to a half inch, 
some weather service offices are even talking about the possibility of up to an inch of freezing rain. I don't know if I quite see that yet, but uh, nevertheless, you're definitely looking at the potential of seeing some pretty good freezing rainfall amounts. Uh, and this is kind of the area I'm mostly concerned with still in this pink region. I did pull an area down just a little bit further to the south. I think why maybe Sioux Falls doesn't have anything more than just a watch at this point is they don't know uh, how much or if they're going to be seeing any freezing drizzle or if they will get any freezing rain. It's kind of a dangerous situation because if they do get any kind of freezing rain down in through here, uh, coupled with the possibility of the strong winds that they could get, it could cause a big problem. But for now, I think uh, the freezing rain will stay north of them. Uh, but like I said, I did pull this pink area a little bit further south than what I had the other night. I also included this area in the yellow, where I think it's probably beyond this whole area here that I've got stretched out. This area in the yellow, I think, has probably got the most significant chance of seeing some freezing rain uh, with this storm system. So keep that in mind. You guys in through here, we're talking about very slippery road conditions, dangerous driving conditions, but also the possibility of seeing some power outages as well. So I've got circled here that band of heavier snow that I think is going to occur here in the blue. Uh, the pink area is kind of where I'm concerned about the freezing rain. And then, of course, this is one model's prediction as far as what potential wind gusts will be. This is starting noon on Tuesday, and so you can see the 30 to 40 to maybe 50 mile per hour wind gusts is actually back down a little bit uh, from what yesterday's models were. But as we get into the evening hours, Tuesday evening, you can see still 40, 45, 50, 55 mile per hour wind gusts. And of course, that's riding right through some of you areas that are going to be dealing with that freezing rain. And as I pointed out before, this is the main area of concern, I think, at this point. So as we get into the evening hours, we're looking at 40, 45, maybe 50 mile per hour wind gusts uh, as we get into Tuesday evening by around 6 p.m. Once we get to uh, midnight, Tuesday night, uh, early Wednesday morning, here we're looking at 55, maybe 60 mile per hour wind gusts for those of you around the Wishick, Ashley, uh, Ellendale, Edgeley area. Uh, so be on the lookout for from uh, again for the potential of seeing uh, 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 power outages. And then uh, it's starting to move into southern portions of Minnesota by the midnight hour. So 50 mile per hour wind gusts, again, dangerous, dangerous conditions. And then further to the north, those of you that had uh, with some of the heavier snows, you know, I, I think we're, it's probably going to be a little bit more than this. I think we definitely have the potential of seeing some 30 to 35 mile per hour wind gusts, particularly through uh, the late afternoon and early evening hours, uh, Tuesday night. So we'll keep that in mind that just because the snow may have moved through doesn't mean the bad weather is over, uh, especially in the kind of this area where I drew in the yellow. Um, you know, you could see uh, some low visibilities, blowing and drifting snow. As we get to Wednesday morning around 6 a.m., those strong winds continue down uh, across eastern parts of South Dakota, southern parts of Minnesota. Again, kind of up and down that region where we're looking at that freezing rain potential. The main band of snow, uh, maybe some 30 mile per hour wind gusts. And then as we get to the noon time frame, those winds finally begin to die down on Wednesday. And this is the very latest American model. And you can see kind of about the same thing. You can see where those stronger winds are really mostly the main area of concern. Uh, when we're coupling the precipitation type along with where the strongest winds are going to be, it's unfortunately in that area where we're looking at the freezing rain. Again, 50, 55, maybe 60 mile per hour wind gusts through the overnight hours uh, going on into Tuesday night and Wednesday as we get to 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. Wednesday. Again, those winds continuing across uh, portions of the Dakotas into southern parts of Minnesota. Maybe some wind gusts lingering uh, 30 miles per hour or so across uh, portions of North Dakota. And in some of these areas where we're seeing or we're expected to see the higher snowfall amounts. And then as we get to the noon hour on Wednesday, finally those winds do begin begin to diminish. And then of course, as I mentioned on yesterday's video, those temperatures are going to get real cold going on into Wednesday, Thursday, and continuing on into the weekend where we're going to be struggling in many areas to get above zero for high temperatures. So 
these this particular system is really going to be dragging in the cold air behind it and we're going to feel it pretty hard going on into the weekend we will have to watch another snowmaker going on late wednesday into wednesday night across western parts of the dakotas particularly the way it's looking right now into southwest north dakota northwest south dakota is kind of the area uh, that looks like it's going to get hit the hardest with this next one that's coming through again maybe the potential for some little bit of a freezing rain event as well out there into the western parts of the dakotas and then as we get uh, into the weekend some big big high pressure pushes in and that's really what's going to help uh, really drive that cold air in and as we get to saturday it looks like um, we've got the potential for a little bit more snow going across the dakotas and into southern minnesota so we'll continue to track that as we go on into the week thank you for watching if you haven't done so already make sure you hit the thumbs up button down below that helps me tremendously also if you wouldn't mind subscribing to this channel i am so close to 3,000 viewers just get me over that hump that would be great also hey guys if you have any questions about what's coming please leave a comment i would be happy to answer any questions i'll also have the live feed up all day on tuesday and i'll be monitoring that comment section as well so if you got any questions throughout the day feel free to ask them on there and i will get to them as soon as i can so be sure to be looking out for that if you subscribe and hit the little bell button there uh, it'll let you know when that live stream starts and we can be chatting throughout the day all right everybody for region weather live i'm meteorologist brad warner everybody stay safe and have a good day